Welcome to why I am not religious. Once again, one reason why I don't subscribe to any religion. One of many reasons. I don't think that sex is a bad thing. Once again, this is mainly the monotheistic religions. Primitive religions really don't have a problem with sex which is probably part of the reason that the monotheistic religions can't stand them. I have also heard that some of the other non-monotheistic religions also don't have that bad of a relationship with it. Anyway, without even necessarily getting into the way homosexuality, bisexuality, transgender people are looked upon by monotheistic religions, which is ridiculous, by the way, because first of all, first of all, we have enough people on this planet, okay? There are not that many... We don't need that many more babies born, you know, and even if there are a lot of homosexuals, babies can still come out of that, you know, we just need, you know, a petri dish as a intermediary, and that's it. The whole... Anyway, even without getting into the homosexuals and transgendered bisexuals just the way most sexual practices are viewed by the monotheistic religions essentially the only way that is not sinful to have sex is with your wife you know with your spouse and you're not supposed to enjoy it big sin and it has to be in a way that can result in children. And once again, even without getting into the fact that originally women could be killed for not being able to give birth to male children who survived birth, you know, because Divorce is a sin. So they would have their heads chopped off. Again, even without getting into that, just today, still, I've met people, and I don't mean like Muslims, I mean Christians. I've met Christians in the United States that are immensely sexually repressed. And it makes them bitter and aggressive, and there's no reason for this, because sex is a natural thing. We don't have to have this ridiculously shameful, guilt-ridden relationship with it. We really don't. Any sexual practice that doesn't physically hurt or harm, or psychologically hurt or harm, one of the people involved, or where one of the people involved feel forced, or threatened, or whatever, coerced into doing something that they do not want to do, that they are not ready to do, is fine. Any other kind of sex, I don't care what the details are. I really don't. As long as it isn't inflicting some kind of harm. And my personal philosophy is, as long as it's done in love, and doesn't hurt someone, what's the problem with it, you know? And monotheistic religions don't really have a particular reason. The original idea was that back then, if you had ten children, nine might not survive, and the tenth might not live past the age of thirty, if he was that lucky. That doesn't happen today, okay? Most children born in first world countries survive. We now have Christians 
having a dozen children, maybe. For what reason? Do you think it's psychologically healthy to have tw 12 children living in the same house of different ages? Where is the privacy in such a situation? What if one of them has special needs? Have you ever thought of that? We don't need to have a ton of children. We don't need to have sex almost always lead to pregnancy, okay? And just for anyone, before you even think of saying the whole thing of, ooh, you know, protected sex, for example, kills potential children. Yes, so does, you know, and masturbation, and yes, but every single time a couple has proper sex, let's call it that, you know, leading, possibly leading to pregnancy. Even if it does lead to pregnancy, do you know just how much sperm actually died to give you that one baby? Have you ever thought of just how much murder that is? The whole ridiculous, neurotic relationship that monotheistic religions has with sex has led to so many problems over 2,000 years, at least, you know? And there's no reason for it. There really is no reason for a sexual relationship where not... where both people don't enjoy the sex, you know? We might as well go for happy relationships, you know? Just in case this world, this life, is the only one we have, let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy each other without hurting each other, because guess what? It's possible. We don't have to, you know, hurt other people to feel good. If we are psychologically healthy, and if we find a mate who is sufficiently psychologically healthy, we can have a good time, and only through things such as religion or dictatorships. Interestingly enough, both religion and dictatorships repress sexuality. I wonder why. It couldn't possibly be so that they will be angry and frustrated, not very happy, not, you know, interested in you know, spreading happiness, not very... And they'll make easier soldiers because they'll want to destroy things, you know. And then there's the whole thing of, you know, repressing sexuality leading to Catholic priests molesting Catholic choir boys, you know, because... <coughs> guess what? <coughs> Excuse me. When someone doesn't have access to who they would most like to mate with, they will actually, their brain will reset it, because guess what? Our bodies need sex. It's kind of what they're made for, if, if you didn't know already. We are, you know, breeding apparatuses. That's, that's what animals are. We eat to survive, we have sex to make sure that our kind survives. So, when someone doesn't have access to who they would prefer to mate with, the brain resets who they think to mate with. The same thing happens in prisons, okay? It's not even that difficult of a concept to grasp. Religion is not making anything sexual better, it's making it worse when it doesn't have to be bad at all. If people just had a natural relationship with sex, such as they, interestingly enough, do in primitive religions, in primitive societies, there wouldn't really be that much trouble with it. 
So, that's it for this one. Goodbye.